But I've got no sense. <laughs> Get it? Cause I'm a pet. No, please. Ah! Gentlemen, I love Total Warhammer. And like any love, it's flawed, unbalanced, and teeters just on the edge of being abusive. But just like love, all those issues can be fixed, and if not just buried under makeup and invasive surgery. So that's why today I'm here to share with you a prized collection of enhancements, fixes, and additions to this game that I so willingly give my life force to. Whether you're an avid modder, never tried doing it before, or somewhere in between, I highly suggest you give this little collection of mine a try. I've gone through it, I've made sure everything works to a reasonable degree, and it's all updated as time of this video, so... Are you ready? Here we go. Gotta get my whip a new tank. The banner overhaul does a wonderful job of sprucing up the faction flags across the game. Meanwhile, the naming overhaul changes the more generic faction titles in favor of proper thematic ones. Winners cheat and cheaters win. Puzzle solutions on screen means you don't need to keep alt tabbing to find a puzzle guide anymore. Most of them were easy enough to do, but man, those dials of the old ones can suck it. Go outside and see the world. Old vs. New Second Start is just one part of a major collection that we'll talk about more in a couple of minutes. But what this one specific mod does is grant an additional starting location to most factions on the Mortal Empires map, giving you a lot more contact with races and areas you would otherwise never see. And to help with this, we have Lily's Climate Overhaul, which rebalances the penalties of non-preferred climates to be slightly more bearable. Who are you people? Mixu's Legendary Lords takes existing generic minor faction leaders and upgrades them into completely unique lords based off of lore, along with some legendary heroes. Custom models, faction effects, skill trees, everything. They'll always be on the map to kill or confederate, but if you use the unlocker, you can play them from the start. It's not stealing if you kill them. Capture artillery is simple. You get a good chance of stealing artillery from your enemy. Just make sure they're the same race and you have room for it. With two skill points in dump, not only do you get two points with every level up, but a dump skill for increasing your maximum health if you somehow manage to learn everything else. We built this city. Higher tier starting capitals and hordes does just that, it makes the majority of starting cities begin at level 4. Meanwhile, tier 4 minor settlements is just as simple, it raises the max level of minor settlements from 3 to 4. Sir, it's a pretty flag, sir. All faction officers adds officers to a majority of units across the game. Purely cosmetic, unique individuals leading from the front or sometimes the back. Standard bearers add some very nice little flags to races like the Empire and Greenskins, just to add a bit more visual flair to the game. Three, five, four, fuck you. Creative Assembly buffed infantry and footlords a while ago, making them a lot harder to knock over to save them from multiplayer cycle charging. But it made campaign monsters kind of lame. So we're going to bring it back with the mass knockdown revert. Now your big stompy lads will happily kick over any idiot in their way again. And while we're at it, let's add the Varied Monsters compilation, which gives new color variations to all sorts of beasties. Boom, kapow! <coughs> Cinematic Battle Effects is the mod you need if you really want to get bombastic with your gameplay. Long-lasting gun smoke clouds, belches of fire and ash, remade projectiles and arrow trails, magical effects cranked to 11, everything looks so much better. No, don't leave, come back. No degradation is simple. Now summoned units like zombies and clan rats just don't magically fall apart. It doesn't change how undead units disintegrate, it just makes summoned units last the whole battle. That's a huge bitch. Total unit resize is another easy one. All this does is scale monsters and lords down to fit with everyone else. Now Carl Franz doesn't make the rest of the empire look like manlets. Rebel, rebel. More rebel rebels changes around the data tables for rebellion armies, balancing them to make a bit more sense. Now you won't have turn 17 rebellions with carnosaurs and doom wheels in them. Look at it! Faction dependent loading screens switch out all the lame ones that you've been staring at for years with new sexy thematic ones. Every individual faction gets one and they're all quite cool looking. Pretty colors. Deeper, darker sea gives the waters of the world some vibrant life and color, from the sandy shoals to the deep ocean to whatever the hell is happening up in Norska. And then we combine that with the painted campaign map and realistic fog of war to not only remove all that weird swirly blue crap, but to actually give the land some color on the map screen. You 
want to be in showbiz, don't you? Better camera is a really complex one. It's going to be real hard for me to tell you. All right, here we go. It makes the camera better. Oh, thank God, I did it. <laughs> Custom faction currencies changes everyone's money to be something unique to them. Souls, teeth, warpstone tokens, stuff like that. Diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic options allows you to vassalize anyone with either force or diplomacy. Fudging vassals makes them a lot more better behaved along with new pop-up events regarding taking territory. And with Force Confederate, all you have to do is attack a faction's last town and you have the option to force them to join you. See new places! Kill people at those new places! Grand Campaign Custom Maps is an incredible collection of handcrafted and well-designed maps that span the entire planet. Siege battles, ambushes, choke points, they're all over the world and they make for incredible battlefields. This land is mine! Provincial patrols are little automated armies that spawn once a province is fully controlled. They waddle around on their own, engaging with anyone that invades or attacks. And the home region bonus simply increases your campaign movement range when going through your own territories. The future's so bright! Clear skies removes distant fog on the campaign map so you can see a bit further than usual and things aren't so muddled. Meanwhile, the ultimate lighting and weather overall is for battles, presenting a wide variety of times of day, cloud coverage, and weather in general to make each fight unique. Gotta step on the gas! The Turn Time Destroyer works when starting a new campaign. Any minor faction outside of a large radius from your capital is destroyed. With just the important factions and ruins left, that means it's a much lighter load for the game to handle and thus faster end turn screens. And let's just add on the Skip Intro Logos mod, just to save us precious milliseconds. Big Loud Exciting Miscasts is a personal favorite of mine and frankly belongs in the game. Now when a character miscasts a spell, they produce a mighty magical fart that hits everyone with a massive debuff, good for saving your caster from infantry mobs or destroying your own army. Brian Blessed! Old school Gotrek and Felix does the legendary murder hobos justice, turning them into a permanent recruitable hero with a fully fleshed out skill tree. And also, now all the lawful factions can recruit them, along with wood elves and tomb kings. It is a small world after all. Old vs. New Lost Factions adds a dozen completely new and unique races to the map. Go up to the frozen lands of Albion, head down south to the burning lands of Araby, hang out with the fat and drunk halflings, go crusading with the grudge bringers, play as the rot bloods from Vermintide 2, or just a bunch of trolls, it's all here. Completely custom made rosters and units, lords, tech and building trees, even spells. But one important thing to note is that if you don't have Miksu's unlocker from earlier activated, not only will they not be playable, they won't even appear on the map. To the windows! Settlement panel landscapes adds lovely background art behind the building panel, reminding you what kind of region this province exists in. While the building progression icons add visual upgrades to the building icons as you complete them. To the wall! Reporting for duty garrisons gives recruitment buildings thematic garrisons related to the units you could recruit from them, which will be needed for Pierce's better sieges. Better towers, better defensive towers, battering rams are needed, weapon teams on walls, all this stuff is insane. Greed is good. More trade resources doubles the amount of tradable resources, surprisingly enough, from Bretonian war horses and naval charts all the way to totally not warpstone and promises of immortality. While no extra upkeep simply removes that silly little percentage that cranks up the more lords you buy, so now you can actually compete with the AI. Now I'm pretty. Better unit cards gives professional looking portraits to all units added in the previous two DLCs, so now you can actually tell what you're looking at. Urgat's unit frames just makes the selection borders much nicer, along with a little green blip that lets you know who you're currently moused over. Look at all these dudes. And the last one, the Regiment of Renown compilation. Just a whole bunch of new regiments spread across all the different races. Now, if you're here and you feel a little betrayed because that was actually 56 mods instead of 30, well, tough titties. If you actually found these interesting, then I encourage you to go follow that link in the description and try them out yourself. And if not, well, I'm going to be putting out some videos soon showing them off myself. Hope to see you there. Later.